Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. I know that many of you subscribe to Adobe's Photographer's Package where you're getting Lightroom and Photoshop. I also know that a lot of you never ever use Photoshop. You do all your work in Lightroom. Well, the truth is you could do a lot of things a lot better and faster in Photoshop. In this video, I'm going to talk about two of those things. Before we begin, I wanted to mention that I have a new feature on my website where once a week we're going to be having an article about gear. And my son Joe kicked it off yesterday with an article about a bunch of different gifts that you could give to a photographer or the photographer in your life that run less than $50. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to that article. Be sure to check it out. Also, while you're down there, if you could do me a favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel and remember to click that little bell so you get updates. Also, follow me on Instagram. I am at Anthony Morganti on Instagram and I'll have a link to my Instagram in the description below this video as well. All right, now I mentioned there's a lot of things in Photoshop that can be done faster and more effectively than Lightroom, than those same things when you try to do them in Lightroom. And I know a lot of you don't like to use Photoshop. It's just in too, too intimidating. Uh, there's a lot there. Uh, you really don't know. You don't understand it that well. Well, these two things are very easy to do, and I suggest that you learn how to do them in Photoshop, and I think you'll find that your workflow will go, go much faster and more efficiently. Now, one of those two things is the ability to remove blemishes and sensor spots. Now I have this image here in Lightroom and I'd like to remove some of the blemishes on her face. Now I could use the spot removal tool in Lightroom and actually the spot removal tool in Lightroom does a decent job, but you'll see it's a lot faster and easier in Photoshop. Now to get this image into Photoshop so I could do this, it's super easy. Just right click right on the image, go down to edit in, and then go down right at the top, edit in Adobe Photoshop 2020. And we'll click there and it will take the image and open it up into Photoshop. Once it opens in Photoshop, uh, you have the choice of workspace. Now your Photoshop might not look like mine because I use a very specific photo uh, workspace. I use the photography workspace. Now if you go over here on the right, You'll see right here there's a little drop down and if you click on that you have all the different workspaces. By default I think Photoshop uses the uh, Essentials workspace. But if you click there again you'll see that there's a Photography workspace and that's the one I prefer to use. So we have this image and I want to remove some blemishes. Now so I could give you a before and after. I'm just going to duplicate the background very quickly by hitting Command J on my Mac. If you had a PC you'd hit Control J. This way I could show you before after very, very easily. Now the tool you want to look for is over here on the tool panel uh, on the left hand side and this is a little band-aid tool and if you hover over it you'll see it's called the Spot Healing Brush. But also notice many of these tools have a little triangle in the corner. That's indicating that there's more than one tool nested into that spot. So if we click and hold with the left mouse button, you'll see that there's a number of tools here. The spot healing brush, the healing brush, the patch tool, content aware move tool, and oops, and the red eye tool. Now, for most instances with blemishes and uh, sensor spots, you could use the spot healing brush tool and it's the easiest to use. Along the top, whenever you pick a tool on the left hand side, there are the tool attributes, and these are different things about the tool that you could change, and it will operate the way you want it to operate. For the case of the Spot Healing Brush, because it's a brush tool, we have a little brush control right here, and we could affect the size, hardness, and spacing. Now, spacing won't matter at all for this application, but hardness does. I found that usually around 80% works best for blemishes and uh, like sensor spots. So I'll leave it there. And if you want to re like change the size of the brush, I suggest you use the bracket keys on your keyboard. The left bracket key will make the brush smaller and the right bracket key larger. Now if we go along, we have a mode. Normal mode is what I suggest you use and content aware and everything else is set. 
And really all you need to do, you could make the brush just bigger than the blemish and click once with your left mouse button, or you could paint. Uh, so you could just come in and do, you know, paint like that. So, but the idea here is you could go super fast and you could just have one uh, hand on your mouse and maybe the other hand on near the bracket key. So you could quickly change the size of the uh, brush as you go. And you could just go very, very quickly. Now she has like a blemish on her shoulder there. We could get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. So you could see how, in my opinion, I believe this is a much more effective way to get rid of any blemishes and sensor spot. Now I'll do before or after. This is why I made the duplicate layer. Uh, there's before and there's after. So that took me while I was talking and giving it not not giving it my full attention. It just took me less than probably 30 seconds just to do that. And you could go on and on uh, very quickly use it. Now there are some instances if a blemish, let's say, is near her lip, where this spot healing brush will kind of smear and it won't look right, in those instances, what you could do is use the brush directly below it, just the healing brush tool. So go to that. Now this tool works a little differently. This tool, you need to sample an area that it will look at and then use that area as reference to replace the pixels under the brush. For example, um, let's say right here, just for the sake of argument, I'll zoom in, I'll hit command plus on my keyboard a little bit so you could see better. So there's kind of a little dark spot there, right? Now, if I want to get rid of that, um, I could, of course, use the uh, spot healing brush I was using before, but it, with the healing brush, hold the alt key in and you'll take a sample. And we're sampling right there. You can see how when I'm holding the alt, it's alt if you have a PC option, if you have a Mac, um, when I hold that in, the uh, cursor turns into that bullseye. So we'll click there. So we're sampling right there. And now we'll go up here and you can see we could just replace those pixels. And you can see as I paint, there's a little uh, crosshair below where I sampled. That's where I'm getting those pixels from. Now in this case, that doesn't look good at all. So I'm going to undo that by hitting Command Z like twice. But you get the idea, I think. So there's rare instances where you're going to have to use the healing brush tool instead of, instead of the spot healing brush tool. So uh, remember those and you'll be fine and you'll be able to go right through and buzz through everything very, very quickly. Now let's go to Lightroom again. And there is another instance where I believe uh, Photoshop is far superior to Lightroom. And that is when you want to remove something relatively large in the image. Now I have this photo here and over on the right hand side I have these like uh, like a tree that's kind of just interfering. You know, it's getting into the sky and I want to get rid of that. Now again, I could use the spot healing brush here, but it probably wouldn't look right and it's going to be a little bit difficult to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this into Photoshop. We'll just right click, go down to edit in, and then edit in Adobe Photoshop 2020. And it will open that up in Photoshop. And once it does, uh, there's a different tool we're going to be using to get rid of these branches. Now to do this, what we're going to use is Content Aware Fill. Now, uh, again, I'm going to uh, duplicate this background. I'm going to hit Command J. Uh, just so I could better show you a before after like I did before. Now with content aware J, uh, fill, what we need to do is select the area we want to fill. And there's a number of different ways to do that. You use any of the selection tools that are available in Photoshop. Now if we go on the left hand side, uh, the second icon from the uh, top in the toolbar is one selection tool. That's the rectangular marquee tool. But there is other tools nested there. So we have the elliptical marquee, marquee tool, a single row marquee tool, and a single column marquee tool. So there's a number there. All those will allow you to make selections. You could just like draw on the image and there's a rectangle that I drew and those marching ants, those dotted lines going around. Those are called marching ants. That means I selected that area. Now I don't want that, so I'm going to undo that by hitting Command D, for that's deselect. If you have a PC, it's Control-D. 
Now below that's another selection tool and it's the lasso tool. And if I click and hold there, you can see that there's three different types of lasso tools. We're going to use the first one. And what we'll do is then you just draw on the image. There's a little piece of branch here. And we'll just come in here. And again, there's tool attributes along the top that um, you could take into account. In this case here, uh, I have feathering at zero. I think that will work fine. This, that usually works best when you have things right up against the edge. Uh, you don't want to feather it too much or that you'll get blurring at the edge of the darker branches. So I have this selected. Now what I do, do I do? Well, to do use Content Aware Fill, there's two main ways you could do it. You could do it a really quick way. The really quick way is hold the Shift key in and hit the delete key on your keyboard and you'll come out with this fill um, box and what we do is right where it says contents make sure that says content aware then you're just going to want everything set like I have it here normal opacity 100% and you're gonna hit OK just like that and you could see it removed it now I'll get rid of those marching ants by hitting command D on the keyboard and you can see it got rid of it fine and it looks great I mean now if you want a little more control maybe this quick method doesn't work quite right for you again there's before after what I'll do is I'll get rid of this layer I'll hit the uh, delete key I'll duplicate that bottom layer again now there's another way we could do this and uh, we'll again get the lasso tool and I'll just come in and do a quick selection of this again just drawing around it that's as simple as that go up here go up here all right now if you want a little more control and you want to tell Photoshop where to look for the replacement pixels what you want to do is go to, to edit and then down to content aware fill so click right there now you come up with this uh, dialog box and by default I think it will be on auto and right when it's on auto wherever this green is that's where it's gonna sample that's where it's going to look for those pixels those replacement pixels now in this case we don't want it to really look at the tops of these trees right we want it to just look at sky now the next choice over is rectangular and it's just getting a rectangular in this case it looks square uh, area don't want that either there's custom click there and now we'll have a custom uh, look or custom choice of where we want it to look when you do that your cursor is a brush with a little plus sign in it that means wherever I paint those are the areas that Photoshop will look for the pixels so we can look right next to it I'll just go right here and I'm just gonna paint right next to it we're gonna look right here and we're gonna replace those pixels with the pixels that are right there all right so when you're satisfied that you chose correctly either one auto rectangular or custom in this case I use custom will keep these settings default and none and we'll output it to the current layer and we'll click OK and when I do that it's super fast you can see it's gone already I'll hit command D to deselect uh, again if you have a PC it's control D so did a great job right now one thing I didn't do on the last image is how do you get this image back into Lightroom well really all you need to do is quit Photoshop and it's going to come up with this dialog box and it's going to ask you if you want to save the changes and just get yes you want to save so and then it's asking about the previous image click Save so it will save both images and you can see down here it's saying saving in the bottom left hand corner and if we go back now uh, what it does is it makes a duplicate copy because these were raw files so there's the original file there's our image without uh, some of the blemishes I removed you can see here's the original file of this with the tree branches in there and there's the one with the replacement so it did a fine job now let's just do one more for the fun of it I have this one it has these are actually water spots uh, it was very windy and the wind was blowing directly at me and the water uh, was kind of coming off the lake and hitting the lens and we also have a piece of trash here so I want to get rid of all this so I'm gonna right click and we're gonna go down to edit in edit in Adobe Photoshop 2020 and it will open this up in Photoshop and once it does again now we could use those two two tools 
Um, we're going to use the uh, spot removal tool to remove the sensor spots, or in this case, actually water drops. And then we're going to use probably the lasso tool to make a selection and content aware fill to get rid of that uh, garbage that's sitting there. All right, so we'll do the spots first. I'm going to click right here and use the spot removal tool. And I'm going to use the right bracket key and make this larger. And we'll just click once and see what it does. Yeah, that's good. So we could go really quick and just go like this. I mean, see how fast. And I, I really truly believe this is a much uh, more effective way and better way to do this than it would be if you were using um, Lightroom. And it's really not that difficult to get the image over into Photoshop. And I think I got them all. I'm just looking real quick. It looks good. So now we want to get rid of this trash down here. So again, we'll get uh, the lasso tool. Now I mentioned you could use any of the selection tools. Why don't just for the fun of it, we use the rectangular marquee tool. Let's just use that. And I'll zoom in. I'll hit Command Plus on my keyboard a couple times. Hold the space bar in so that the... Uh, cursor turns into the hand tool and I could drag it around and so I have this uh, rectangular marquee tool and we're just gonna draw a selection around that piece of trash hopefully you could see it there and we'll use the quick method uh, where I'm going to hold the shift key in and hit delete this dialog box comes up I'm gonna use content aware fill and click OK and it's gone as fast as that I'll hit command D to deselect and you can see it looks great I'll hit Command-0 to uh, fit to screen. Uh, that's Control-0. Wherever I say Command on my Mac, I mean Control if you're using a PC. And that looks pretty good right there. So we're going to close down Photoshop. Go to Photoshop. Quit Photoshop. It's going to ask us to save it. Yes, we're going to save it. And it will now then reopen up into Lightroom. And here's the before image. And you can see all those sensor spots in the garbage, and there's the after image. And we took care of all that very, very quickly. So those are two things of many things that Photoshop does better. And those two things, in my opinion, you could do much more effectively and efficiently and faster in Photoshop than you can in Lightroom. So um, those of you that are subscribing to the Photographer's Package through Adobe, uh, don't let that Photoshop uh, just sit idle. Uh, I think you, if you utilize it, it will really help uh, you streamline and uh, help your workflow be more efficient. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.